evening, viewers. Trust you had a wonderful Sunday. And we are back with you again. This is the Church of Nazarene Family Forum. And uh, we do enjoy coming to you every Sunday around 5 o'clock on CBC TV 8. I trust today that we, as we share on another important topic regarding family life, that you would benefit. Call a friend, perhaps, and a member of the family to share with us in today's program. Today, in today's program, we're focusing on the parenting the special needs style, and this is an area of significance. Incidentally, this is the month, Autism Month. Um, we trust that even as you listen to us, we're not focusing specifically on that. We want, of course, that is inclusive, but if you have a friend or you know a friend that has a special needs, a special needs to, or someone that you work with, um, I believe that it'd be helpful to join with us this evening. In this evening's program, I'm pleased to have with me um, Dr. Janice Gibbs. Um, good evening. Good evening. Right? Mm -hmm. And Janice Gibbs is an educator. Of course, she would have taught over 28 years in a special, in a special area of special needs. And right now, currently, the past eight years, she is the education officer with the Ministry of Education responsible for special needs. So I know she has a wealth of knowledge in this area. Um, having taught the, the, that special aid group and as well now being the education officer responsible for special needs. And of course, as usual, you have with me, Reverend Kelman, my co-host. Pleasant afternoon to everyone. Right. Um, I'm sure a little more about Dr. Gibbs. She would have done her PhD in education. And of course, she is a parent herself of two adult young ladies and also a brand. Is that right? Yes. I, a proud brand. <laughs> uh, she loves the Lord, I know for sure. That's where her heart is. And her teaching, I, I believe, is also very much a ministry for her as well. And uh, married to her husband, Garfield. How many years over? 36. 36 years. <laughs> Wonderful 36 years. I'll, I'll uh, catch you soon. Yes. All right. May God bless you and your family. Yes. Uh, we are so glad to have you here with us today, Dr. Gibbs. Thank you. thank you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity that we can share with the public on areas relating to the family. Recognize the family is indeed the core of the society. And if we can address, if we can address significant areas in family life, we believe that we will help to enrich family life in Barbados and ultimately make a better society. I pray today as we share on this topic of special needs, Lord, that you will guide us. We pray specifically, specifically for those parents who have children with special needs that we will give them the strength, the wisdom, and I pray even as we would share that they'll be able to identify some areas that can be of practical help to them. Bless us, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Well, just want to share a verse with you from the Word, as I usually do. Um, we're not sharing for sharing's sake. But we did believe the word is very instructive. Um, when I think of this program, this passage came to me immediately from Psalm 139, verse, verses, I want to read verses um, 13 and 14, Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Your words are wonderful. I know that full well. And this is quite relevant because we want to let those um, persons out there who may have special needs, and of course their parents as well, to know that their children are fearfully and wonderfully made and they are precious um, in the eyes of God. I think um, the Lord down the, the, that, that comment is made that they are, we are precious in the eyes of God. Before we were formed, he knew us and loved us. And therefore, I just want to remind parents, if you have children with special needs, yes, they're special as well. Just remember that. We'll be back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. A very special welcome back to you. <clears throat> and uh, indeed, we are delighted to have all gives with us this uh, evening to share. But I just want to concur with Bill Farley before she begins to share that special needs children are created by a great loving God and that they are the image of God as well, the Imago Dea. And interesting enough, I was reading an article by a seminary, um, for the seminary, and they were talking about the understanding of, of, of God being uh, present in terms of being shaped in his image, uh, especially these children. They, they, they were doing a feature on autism, and uh, I thought that was quite, quite interesting to uh, to, to denote, you know, in this, in this session. Yeah. So we want to, to, to focus now on what um, Dr. Gibbs is going to say to us, and I believe that give her a wealth of experience. You know, I'm a very beautiful lady, and, uh, and I'm sure she's going to be, she's going to share with us uh, out of the wealth of her, of her knowledge. Mm -hmm. Dr. Gibbs, over to you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having me. I want to share for a few moments on the parenting of the special needs child. We are going to look first of all at developmental disabilities and what we mean by that word, by those words. Uh, that a developmental disability is a lifelong disabling condition that begins early in life and it significantly impacts the individual's ability to follow through with activities of a physical nature or a social nature or an academic nature. These activities are curtailed by a developmental disability. Now some developmental disability types might be including autism, Down syndrome, epilepsy, cerebral palsy, moderate to severe intellectual disabilities, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. These developmental disabilities affect the student's functioning, their speech can be affected, their motor skills, their walking and so on, their grasp, their cognitive functions may be affected, their thinking, and their social skills may be affected as well. So the parent may notice a delay in the child's speech development, the development of the speech may be delayed. There may be a long period of time before the child says his or her early words. Mm -hmm. And then there might be a challenge with the child being able to make or form sentences. The social skills may be affected in certain cases as well. The child may not interact with other children, especially students who are challenged with autism. They may not interact with other children as typically developing students do. They may not um, play the way that other typically developing students mm -hmm. do. They may just be lining up the toys or throwing the toys rather than imaginative play. You might notice these things in the early years, as well as 
cognitively, the student may not be able to problem solve in the early days. They may have challenges in um, being able to swallow, being able to, to, to take uh, solid foods after the month of the, the third month of life. They may still prefer liquids even into the ones and the twos. They may not be able to get the function of that swallowing mm -hmm. in place. Somehow it is delayed in that um, in that particular motor function. So early parents parents may be seeing these early signs, the speech delays, the challenges with mobility and walking, the challenges with the grasping and the other motor functions. They may see the challenges with the uh, social skills. They may recognize some cognitive um, challenges in the early years as the child develops and as they see other typically developing students. They may wonder what is the cause of the delay. You know, some of the causes are um, still being researched, but um, the causes may be hereditary. Mm -hmm. There may be um, some challenge with the chromosomes. They, the causes may be during the birth birth um, process. The mm -hmm. birth process. They, those challenges may have occurred. There may have been some trauma during the birth of the child and um, sometimes the, the challenge occurs after birth there might be some accident mm -hmm. some trauma mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. brain brain injury traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. the child may have had a fall as a baby mm -hmm. or as a young toddler mm -hmm. or they may have been a motor accident mm -hmm. that may cause that delay in the child's development. And in those early years, any impacts in terms of the, the heredity, in terms of the birth process, or in terms of the trauma can cause a developmental disability. So parents need to be very vigilant, especially in the early years. Mm -hmm. Well, there are some services that are locally available if a parent recognizes that the child is not typically developing if there are delays in the areas that we spoke about earlier. The parent can make contact with the AC Graham Development Center in Jemmett's Lane. They, they can make contact with the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. There's a developmental pediatrician that they can see if privately, if they want to go privately. The developmental pediatrician looks at the child's developmental stages mm -hmm. and recognizes where the child is not meeting the milestones. Mm -hmm. When this occurs, the developmental pediatrician will be able to advise the parent as to what services the child may need because the child may need speech therapy, the child may need physical therapy, occupational therapy, the child may need a special um, provision for education. All of these may be necessary for the child. So the developmental pediatrician is very important in the child's life. It's early intervention that we are looking at. And when those, um, those parents recognize that the child has any type of delays, don't wait until the child is school age. Make sure that they go to the clinics, the polyclinics, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, or the AC Graham Development Center. The AC Graham Development Center is a free Ministry of Health clinic, which houses a multidisciplinary team of professionals. There is a developmental pediatrician there, a speech therapist, an occupational therapist, physical therapist and audiologist who listens, who, who does the screening for the, for the hearing test, mm -hmm. as well as the, the, um, the persons who, who do the, the therapies 
for the limbs and so on, mm -hmm. they are all in one clinic and it's absolutely free because mm -hmm. it's under the Ministry of Health. And those professionals do the full screening of the child. Mm -hmm. If there are any um, challenges, they are able to spot the challenges and they are able to, to make those recommendations mm -hmm. that, the, mm -hmm. that the parent would need. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to speak to the parents as to what they can do if they notice these challenges and it has been confirmed by the AC Graham or a pediatrician or the polyclinic or Queen Elizabeth Hospital that the child is um, being challenged with some specific intellectual or motor or speech or cognitive disability. I want to encourage the parents to remember that this child is a special God-given gift and that this child needs your support. Mm -hmm. I cannot stress that enough that you will need to be supportive of the child in his or her development. It is also helpful when you have sought the, the assistance of the, of the professionals at the development center or the QVH and so on. It is also helpful that you work closely with whatever therapies are recommended, whether speech therapy, physical therapy, occupational, and so on, and that you work closely with the child's school when the child becomes of school age or is in nursery school, mm -hmm. that you work closely with the professionals who are teaching mm -hmm. the child because we want to know exactly what are the skills that are being taught to the child so that we can support the child at home with the same types of interventions. If the child is learning how to sound words, how to, how to speak, how to articulate, well, we will want to know what are the areas of articulation that are being worked on, and we work on those as well. If the child is doing letter songs, if the child is learning how to grasp the pen, how to grip the pencil, how to write, those types of things we want to know so that we can help support the child at home. The parent's role is to be extremely supportive mm -hmm. through this developmental process, these developmental processes. So we're working with the school, we're setting up a routine for the child that should mirror in large measure, I'm not saying the same timetable, but it should, it should mirror in large measure what is being done at school and especially around this time with the COVID um, protocols in place and the restrictions that are there, parents and children are in the house together and it, it's very helpful if the parent can liaise with the teacher of that child and find out what is um, supposed to be taught and can assist the child during the that time by putting a little schedule out, a little timetable with some pictures so you're going to, so the child is going to know well we are going to be having um, games time or we are going to be having letters or we're going to be looking at numbers, mm -hmm. something set out so that every day there is a routine, especially for our students with autism. They need that routine. Mm -hmm. They need to know when things are happening. And that routine is very important for them, for their emotional stability. So they want to know what is happening. And if you have the little pictures next to the activity, mm -hmm. you include other activities like riding the bicycle or fun activities like playing a game. Playing games is an extremely useful and helpful bonding activity with your child mm -hmm. so that the child knows that he or she is a part of the family mm -hmm. and that they are valued as part of the family. So I encourage parents also to give them, give the children the social exposure that they want, they need to have. Take them out, take them to the park, take them to picnics, 
keep them on your fun rides, the bus rides, the, the, the sightseeing tours. If you're traveling, take them overseas. Let them have their little parties when it's their birthday and so on, so that they know that they are a valued member of mm -hmm. the family. Parents need to invest time. We know it's not easy to have a child mm -hmm. with a developmental disability or an intellectual disability or a learning disability, mm -hmm. but the time that parents take mm -hmm. to work with the child, to sit with the child, to talk with the child, to read with the child is extremely important. Our children are unique individuals. They have their, their, mm -hmm. their strengths. They have their weaknesses, and we are there to help mm -hmm. put that network of support mm -hmm. around them as family and as community, as church, mm -hmm. as, as, as various um, organizations in the community. And I want to encourage parents also to join one of the support groups, mm -hmm. one of the support groups that may be formed, uh, that may have been formed um, locally mm -hmm. to support any of the the, the Areas of disability that we did, that we mentioned earlier, right. autism or students with intellectual challenges or mm -hmm. students with mobility challenges, the myasthenia mm -hmm. gravis or the, the 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 multiple sclerosis and so on. Any of the groups through the Barbados Council for the Disabled, they can find out all of the individual groups. Mm -hmm. I think there are 17 groups currently, Whoa. and they can, through the Council for the Disabled, they can be directed into which group would be very supportive of the particular challenge yeah. that the child is Yeah, yeah, well, I just want to kind of, before we go to break, just, just kind of drop, drop a little bit there, because I was wondering about that, you know, the issue of, of groups and support, because Based on what you've said, I mean, it, it, it would seem to me as though uh, for the parent, I mean, it's a it's a, a, a challenge, and having that kind of of um, support, you know, a person that, that are like minded, you know, who may even have skills that they can share in, in that particular group context, I thought maybe it would be useful. So I'm glad you raised that mm -hmm. that that issue there. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thank you for sharing. Of course, we to come back with you. Woman, viewers, as we continue this very interesting discussion. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Thank you all. Great to be back with you again. And, um... I'm sure that you would have gleaned much from what Dr. Gibbs would have said uh, in our initial session. Now, I thought Dr. Gibbs about the whole idea of special needs and the fact that some parents might struggle a little bit with accepting the particular reality. Um, what can we do to assist those parents? Well, we can support the parents. We can give them the, the, the knowledge that they might need. They may not be as informed about ch children's developmental stages as they, as they may be. So we want to give them the information, show them the, the areas that the child may have the challenge in, the areas that the child will need the support in, and give them an understanding of what to do to mm -hmm. help support the child in this area. Yeah. Sometimes they do have um, what we would call denial, denial. of the child's challenge, but as time goes on and the child gets closer to common entrance age, mm -hmm. then there is sometimes that, that awakening, awakening mm -hmm. in which they realize or recognize mm -hmm. that the child is having significant challenges mm -hmm. when ch um, compared to the age appropriate peers. Mm -hmm. And that's when sometimes those, um, those alarms or those, that mm -hmm. awakening will prompt the parent mm -hmm. to seek the types of assistance that are needed. I know, and that, that's regrettable though, because that child will be in school 
for at least six years or so by that time, five years, you know. Um, so, so as you said, early intervention really is the solution, yes, yes. Well, I want to thank you for sharing, though. But before you go, I just want you to just repeat. Um, well, we talked about the AC Green Development Center. Um, let perhaps listeners, uh, viewers know, parents who are listening, um, the services that are available there. And of course, you said it's free. Yes. Yes, because that's the mm. problem sometimes persons think they have to spend so much money and then they wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just share briefly what are some of the services there and then we'll have a closing prayer by Reverend Kelman. There, there are the developmental pediatricians there. There are two of them. One works with the early students and one works with the teens. Then there's the speech and language therapist. Mm -hmm. There's also the psychologist. Mm -hmm. There is the physiotherapist mm -hmm. and the, the occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. And there's also the audiolog mm -hmm. audiologist mm -hmm. who works with the students who mm -hmm. may have challenges mm -hmm. with hearing. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the student's speech does not develop mm -hmm. because there is a hearing cue deficit. So definitely the full suite. Of, of services, of services, yes. a multidisciplinary yes. team there at the AC yes. Green mm -hmm. that you can tap into, mm -hmm. and they will give you the supports that you need in terms of mm -hmm. the therapies, mm -hmm. in terms of the the, the diagnoses, the assessments. Mm -hmm. They are all there at the AC Green. Thank so you. parents, just remember you you don't have to deal with it alone. Um, there's help, help available, mm -hmm. and. Um, I trust that you would realize that with the assistance that this child or these children can grow to be meaningful citizens. I'll close in prayer. Shall we pray? Almighty God, we give you thanks today for, for the gifts and for the information that she would have shared. And we pray, God, even now that it be useful having parents to understand the importance of early intervention. Well, I pray, Father, as well for parents who may be having to deal with a special needs child. I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom. I pray God for the will to continue. Father, I pray God today that we would understand that every child or each child matters. And that gracious God, we would do all that we can to ensure that a child reaches his or her maximum potential. And so gracious God, we give you thanks today for this program. And may you use it, Father, to the furthest of your kingdom in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Join us next program where we continue focusing on parenting, special needs. God bless you.